On this video, I'd like to share some really current research that was just published this month, looking at how changes in the microbes that live inside MS patients, how they can impact the severity of the disease. There have been several studies that I've looked at, and it's really exciting to see that there is more interest looking at how the microbiome can be the cause or could impact chronic diseases like multiple sclerosis. And this study just adds more confirmation to what we know already that multiple sclerosis is an infectious disease. If we haven't met, my name is Pam Bartha. I'm the author of Become a Wellness Champion and the founder of Live Disease Free. This topic is very important to me because 34 years ago, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I was so fortunate that early on after my diagnosis, I learned that MS was caused by infections in the body. And as I treated those infections, those parasites, I have been able to live MS-free for over 34 years now. And we've had the amazing privilege to coach over a thousand wellness champions from over 15 countries, helping them in their recovery. So there are many people recovering from multiple sclerosis by treating the infections, the parasites that cause MS. So the study I'm gonna look at today, we're gonna talk about what they found and we're gonna talk about how relevant is this in helping us to find a cure for MS. So the study is called gut microbiome of multiple sclerosis patients and paired household healthy controls reveal associations with disease risk and course. We will post the link to this study in the description of this video so you can go and look at it after. So in the study, they looked at the microbes that live in the gut of healthy people and people with multiple sclerosis. So 576 people that had MS and the same 576 people that were healthy but lived in the same homes as the people that had MS. But these people, they were not related genetically. So people that lived in the same home, so they're in the same environment, but they were not related genetically. People that lived, that were participants included people from the United States, the United Kingdom, Spain, and Argentina. So they looked at the stool and the blood samples of these participants, and they used DNA testing. They also looked at disease activity, so how active the disease was, but also they looked at the participants' diets. They found dozens of new bacteria associated with MS, but they also found what other studies had found that there were certain bacteria that were present in higher numbers that were more of the inflammatory or caused more of an inflammatory reaction where we have inflammation, disease symptoms, and there were less of the health-promoting microbes that would promote immune modulation. So the differences in the microbes in the bacteria, so they weren't looking at protists or worms, just bacteria, but they really felt that those differences really are going to be impacting the susceptibility to multiple sclerosis. So they also looked at, again, where different people lived in different areas, different geographical locations in the world, and they noticed that there were differences, which makes sense, right? Because there's different microbes in Africa than in Canada or in Australia or the South America, right? And so that was pretty much what we would understand to be true. But they also found that uh, they confirmed that where a person lives in the world, it contributes a lot to the types of microbes. We talked about that, but also the types of multiple sclerosis and the severity of MS. And they also found that age and sex and body mass also impacted the types of microbes to some degree. But diet was not really, they didn't find that there was a really big difference with diet. But I don't know there's not enough information about really how they assessed the diets. They did say though that a healthier diet was definitely corresponded or linked more with a more diverse microbiome. So the healthier we eat, the more variety of health promoting microbes we would have in our body. And 
some bacteria, they said, remained unaffected by dietary changes. And they commented that the origin and the biological relevance of these associations, they just didn't, they weren't clear on it. So although they found these new species of bacteria, they also found that there were similar uh, inflammatory bacteria that were present more in MS patients, but they're still not clear of what this all means. They also absor observed what I wanted to share, which was interesting, because a lot of us that are sick, we take vitamin D supplements. But they observed that MS patients that took vitamin D regularly, they showed no significant influence on their gut microbiome composition. So this study, they spent a lot of time, a lot of energy, and I'm sure a lot of money in putting this study forward. And they really didn't find a lot of meaningful information. I guess a little bit of helpful information is that, yes, people that have MS, that the, the bacteria are very different than in people that are healthy. But And they found that there were certain bacteria, again, that are associated with more inflammation, right, more symptoms in other conditions, but also in MS, that were present in higher amounts with MS patients versus healthy participants. So that is not extremely helpful. And they were talking about how now they would like to study these people for longer periods of time. If you're like me, you're like, this is just me, but I'm really tired of these studies that really don't produce a lot of meaningful information. And I understand, and I guess, I guess what they were trying to pull with this study or trying to show a correlation was where they were talking about, well, people that were on a number of different disease-modifying drugs, so they talked about multiple different MS drugs, but the people that were on the MS drugs versus the people that were not being treated with disease-modifying drugs, there was a slight difference in the bacteria, and they felt, well, maybe that was somehow beneficial, but they didn't have anything to prove that as far as huge symptom improvements or less severity of the disease. But they were trying to stretch it towards, you know, saying that the it could possibly be helpful that the disease modifying drugs might help with the types of bacteria in MS patients if versus people that are not treated. So I found that to be quite a weak stretch, but I understand why they would do that because they want to promote the disease modifying drugs, which we know don't work. Right. And and I'm not a doctor, I'm not getting medical advice. This is my own personal opinion. This is working with hundreds and hundreds of people that have been on these disease modifying drugs for a long time. We go on one, we use it for a while, we find that we're, or maybe our lymphocytes are dangerously low, or we have horrible adverse effects, we're moved on to another one, then we're moved on to another one and on to another one. So we know that suppressing our immune system is not the answer, but treating the microbes is. What we see in the Live Disease Free Plan is that yes, our students that that we work with, they do have pathogenic bacterial infections for sure. Some of the very awful, nasty uh, bacteria that's been found, but that's not what's the biggest culprit. We know that there, it's really dysbiosis. So the good research is showing that we're really out of balance. We have bacterial infections, we have worms, we have protists, we have fungal infections. And when we treat all of it, we recover. If you haven't had a chance to watch my last uh, video I did last week, make sure you'll find it on Rumble and you'll find it on our website, livediseasefree.com. You can also find the blog post. So with our, when I do a video, I like to do a write-up on it because some people like to watch videos. Some people like to just read. So you'll find that it is uh, treating parasites, case number one. Look to see what this one student has passed in a very short time. It will just, it's just crazy. And when you see what she passed and you see the symptom improvements she had, then you understand that just focusing on the smallest parasites like the bacteria is not going to get our health and our life back. Yes, we may need to treat the pathogenic bacteria. 
Absolutely, but they're a lot easier to treat when we do no longer have the larger parasites that keep infecting us with the bacteria and creating a toxic environment for the bad bacteria to thrive. So we have to do things in an order and that's what we do with the Live Disease Free Plan. Number one, we stop feeding these parasites. We decrease the food tremendously. We notice a lot of symptom improvement. We notice that we're feeling so much better. We're sleeping better. Our bladder is, has improved significantly. We have more energy. Many symptoms can improve strength, less spasticity, etc. Diet is key. If you haven't learned about the Live Disease Free Diet, you can find information about that on livediseasefree.com. In the main menu, you'll find it there and the, under the blog post also, start to change your diet, start to feel better, start to believe and, and start to learn about these infections, start to learn about the parasites. I've got playlists on our website, Live Disease Free, and on YouTube, and, they, and I am moving on to Rumble also. And learn about the infections, change your diet, get ready to treat, and then get support. Maybe you have a practitioner that will help you. If you don't have anyone to help you, reach out to us, watch my masterclass training. We have a very proven plan that works really well to help you get ready to treat, to assist you while you're treating in the academy or even just in the essentials, which is helping you to get ready to treat and equipping you to work with your practitioner. We'll help you with whatever you need. So if you enjoy these types of videos, then make sure to like and subscribe so that you will hear when I'm doing the next training video and make sure to watch, go to that Treating Parasites case study number one on our website and also on the Rumble, etc. and watch that. And that will help you to understand why you may be feeling so absolutely horrible. And you don't have to wait. This research, you can see they're really taking a long time. I don't know if they're ever going to get to the root cause. There is no financial incentive to treat parasites, unfortunately. So with that, if you need support, watch my masterclass training. If you just want to start learning more about it, if change your diet, follow the Live Disease Free Diet, learn about the parasites. But just know that there is hope for you. There is an answer to why you feel so lousy. It all boils down to treating the cause of the symptoms you're dealing with, and that is treating the parasites. Take care and bye-bye for now.